Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and today I'm coming at you with a super, super quick tutorial. I just wanted to throw something up, and uh, we're five days away from Christmas, so I've got to get an engraving on the blade of this axe. I thought it was the perfect opportunity to teach you guys how to use the pen tool to uh, create custom outlines for use in EasyCAD. You could use this for Lightburn too. Uh, we may even try to jump into Lightburn and do this in Lightburn as well, but um, we're going to be covering it in Illustrator definitely. We'll see how it goes. And and uh, everything should be pretty straightforward. So stick around if you've always wanted to learn how to use the line tool to create custom outlines for lining up jobs, because we're getting started right now. Okay guys, so we're ready to get started and the first thing we want to do is hop into the desktop here. Uh, super quick tutorial today. It's five days before Christmas and I've got a ton of other jobs to do, but uh, this is just the perfect opportunity to teach you guys how to do this. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is take a top-down photo of the item you want to do an outline for. It's really important that you keep the item in the center of the frame and you want to make sure that it's not edge to edge. Lenses actually curve in the corners. So if your object is filling the frame, you're actually going to have skewed dimensions uh, on, on those corners. So keep it in the center and keep it as top down as you can and snap the photo. And once the photo snapped, uh, get it onto your PC because we're going to be bringing it into Illustrator right away. Once you're in Illustrator, you're just going to want to go ahead and create a new document. Uh, the size doesn't particularly matter right now. And uh, bring your photo into Illustrator. So here it is in Illustrator. Uh, it's pretty big right now, and that's actually the way that we want it to be. Uh, we want it nice and big. Uh, we'll zoom out just a touch here so we can see the whole thing without scooting around. Um, but that is looking really good. And in order to draw on this, we don't want to be constantly moving our photo around. So we're going to come into layers and uh, right here in this blank area next to the layer that the photo is on, we're just going to click it. And uh, that's going to lock that in place. And now we won't be able to move this anywhere, uh, but we do need somewhere to draw on. So let's come in here and create a new layer. Make sure it's over our photo layer so that we can actually draw our outline. And we'll come back in and get rid of our photo when we're finished. With that done, uh, now we're on our new layer. And you can see as I click and drag around on here, we can't move the photo. That's ideal. That's what we want. Uh, I'd also like to just mention, we really wanted to get this axe head as level as possible. So I actually used some cardboard chips as a shim here just to keep it nice and level for the photo. Next step, we're going to come up in here and we're going to grab the pen tool. Uh, so if we uh, click here, this is the curve tool. We don't want that one. We just want a regular pen. Uh, and we're just going to grab and kind of recenter here. All we're going to do is click at a nice easy starting point. So like right here on this corner. And we're just going to come through and we're just going to start adding lines. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, I mean, you could take more time and put these points really, really close together. If accuracy is super duper important, you're going to want to do that. I'm kind of going a little fast here uh, just because it is the Christmas rush and we're just doing text. So uh, we're not actually doing anything that requires uh, too crazy of accuracy. I'm going to zoom a little bit because you can see these points, they like to snap into place. Uh, zooming in will actually help with that a little bit. Um, and we're just going to go point to point and just kind of move these along here uh, as, as evenly and quickly as possible. Uh, we don't want to spend too long doing it. So I'm just going to shut up here for a minute and uh, we're going to zoom through this. So let me go ahead and forward this along. So I just wanted to mention really quick here, you can see that the uh, the outline here has covered up the area that uh, we're trying to see uh, while we're doing our outline. Just go ahead and do your best guess as to where those points are going to fall and it should clear up pretty quickly and I'll show you in a second how to go in and clear those points. But here we are at the end when you finally connect to the very first point that you drew, uh, it will close the shape and now we've got a nice completed shape right here that is the perfect uh, shape and size that we need it to be. Well, shape anyway, we'll get to sizing in a minute. Now, uh, if you have some nodes that are off like down here or there's one up here that's bothering me, this one right here I really don't like, uh, and you wanna fix them, you don't have to redo the whole thing. That's uh, no big deal. We're just gonna come in here and click the direct selection tool. 
And this direct selection tool is going to actually allow us to manipulate individual nodes. So we can just go ahead and drag those into place uh, just like this. And uh, any ones up here that we want to fix as well, we could go ahead and uh, just kind of tighten those up there as well. Uh, this last one here, this one's really bothering me here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pop that one back into place and kind of smooth out that curve a little bit too. Uh, here again, you can see uh, zooming in gives you a little finer control there. So if you do need finer control, you can go ahead and zoom. Uh, but that is about it. So with that done, the last thing that we need to do is get this sized appropriately. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of the layer with the photo on it. We don't need that anymore. Uh, so right here, we can just go ahead and select the photo layer and hit the trash can. And uh, yes, we want to delete. And we're left with our outline right there. That's looking really good. Um, now we have two easy to measure points. We've got this point of the ax head right down here and this one up here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to grab our ax uh, and we're going to just take a measurement from point to point and we'll create a line that size uh, and, and use that to line up the ax. It's, it's fairly simple. Okay guys, this is a little sloppy because I literally don't have time to like reconfigure my camera right now because again, holidays, right? Um, but caliper, I'm just going to take this right here. We're going to expand it out. Uh, and I'm going to try to do this as accurately as possible. You can take more time when you're doing yours. And uh, we just want to get an accurate measurement of the distance between those two points. So let's try to get that real quick. And it looks like we're at right about just a little bit bigger than 113. Come on. I'm like right at the end of my limit here uh, with the caliper. We want a nice even measurement. 113.84. Uh, so we're going to just go ahead and assign that to the width uh, variable for our piece. So uh, 113.83, 113.84. Let's head over to the desktop. And in here, we're going to just select our width. And you can just put metric values into a, uh, a standard field on Illustrator. So 113.84. And we're going to hit enter. It's going to resize that for us. We do have our proportions locked, so it's not skewing, right? And uh, there it is. Actual size. Um, that looks really good. But uh, this is inches, right? We need to put millimeters. So 113.84 millimeters. I thought that looked a little large. That seems much more appropriate. Uh, so keep an eye on that, too. Make sure you hit the MM uh, there if you're going to be using metric. Otherwise, you're good to go. We can go ahead and turn off the fill on this, and we've got a nice stroke outline uh, that's ready to come into EasyCAD. So um, from here, there's a couple things that we can do next. Before we move on, though, I do just want to save this somewhere that we can find it later. So let's just come to File, Save As, and we're just going to save it right to the desktop here. Uh, we'll call this Axe Outline AI. And we'll go ahead and save that. Remember, if you're saving something for EasyCAD, it has to be Illustrator version 8. So we will hit Illustrator 8 and hit OK. Uh, and that'll go ahead and save for us. And it's right down here. Uh, Axe Outline AI ready to go. Perfect. So really quick, guys, I do just want to show you, you can do this in Lightburn as well. So we'll just import and we're going to click our Axe head here. And again, really, really big, uh, but that's what we want, okay? And uh, we're just gonna right click this here and click lock selected shapes. That way we, uh, we cannot move that around. And we're gonna grab our pen tool and same exact thing here, okay guys? We're just gonna come in and we're gonna add points. And uh, we're just gonna shoot through this really, really quick. Um, and it's, it's really not any different. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm using the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel there to uh, click and drag around as I'm moving along. Um, and that's really helpful if you're trying to move throughout the space. You have the same issues here with the snapping, so uh, you do just want to be careful of the snap. And we're just going to work our way around this too. So again, one more time guys, quick time lapse as I outline this piece. So I do just want to mention really quick, guys, uh, if you're having issues with the snapping, you can go ahead and hold control uh, and control will give you exact pixel point accuracy uh, with your clicks there. So you can go ahead and hit control and the snapping issue will be no more. Uh, so go ahead and do that. And as we come here to the final piece of the curve, we're just going to go ahead and uh, connect those. I'm going to let go of control for this one because we do want it to snap to our original point and that will go ahead and close the shape. Uh, if we come back to our selector tool here, we can select 
uh, and you, you might have to try a couple times uh, to make sure you select the actual photo and right click here, unlock selected shapes, deselect everything, select the photo and delete. Uh, and that's gone and we're left with our axe blade outline. We can select the outline here and we're just going to do the same thing we did in uh, AI. We're going to assign 113.84 and uh, it's at actual size now. If you're using this in Lightburn, you don't have to do anything else. You're already done. If you need to save this for EasyCAD, it's very easy. Just go to File uh, and then we're going to go to, where is it? Export. And uh, we want to save this as an Illustrator file, AI. These will work with EasyCAD right out of the gate. So we'll go ahead and just name this. Uh, let's see, where did we put this? Uh, on the desktop. Uh, Axe Outline AI. So we'll go ahead and just rename this here uh, LB for Light Burn and hit Save. Uh, so finally, we can just come over here. We don't need to save this. We've already exported it. We've got our LB version and our AI version. And we can come in here uh, to our fiber folder. We'll pull up our EasyCAD folder right here. Actually guys, I uh, <laughs> I opened my 110, but I think we need the 150 for this one. No worries, we'll just go ahead and open the 150 there instead. And we're just gonna test both of these really quick. They should be identical. We're gonna import a vector. And uh, again, we're just gonna navigate really quick to our desktop, which is where we're keeping those two files. Uh, we've got our AI version right here. So we'll go ahead and hit open. There it is. There's our AI outline that we uh, we created in Illustrator. And same thing for the Lightburn one. We'll go ahead and open that as well. Uh, that one is importing way over here to the side, but no worries. Uh, there it is. Um, two very good outlines right there. Uh, good to go. And of these, of course, will work when we use our red light. So let's get the axe underneath real quick. Uh, we'll just center up our Illustrator one here and we'll hit red. And uh, let's go check it out on the bed. So a couple notes here. First, um, you'll see that our red box is a box uh, that's not particularly useful to us. So if we hop over here uh, into EasyCAD, we just want to stop lighting and make sure we check this box called Show Contour. Uh, and when we check that box and we hit the red light there uh, and pop back over to EasyCAD, you will see we are now getting our perfect outline, uh, no problem. You, you may have to make a couple small adjustments for example, uh, here in EasyCAD, if we really wanted to get this spot on, we could just tighten this up just a little bit uh, on both ends there, and we can relight again. And uh, over here, we can see it's actually fitting just a, a smidge better now. Uh, we could even go just a little bit further. Let's see if we can just really kind of bring that into, uh, into, into play here where it's supposed to be. We'll go ahead and light that again, and that's looking perfect. Uh, that's, that's really, really awesome. So um, from here, uh, you're, you're basically good to go. You can do whatever you want with this blade. I'll have to do a little bit of text for this, um, and we can uh, probably figure that out really quick before we wrap up today. So I'll show you how to do that too. Another note, uh, if you are not in focus, this will not be the appropriate size. So just make sure that you are in focus uh, before trying to line this up, because if you're not focused, again, it will not be the right size. Uh, your focal distance definitely determines the size of the objects as they're projected. And in this case, uh, in particular here, with the axe blade, um, the blade is curved, so it's more in focus towards the top uh, and less in focus towards the bottom, which is going to cause some distortion with our red light. It's not always going to be perfect, but it's much better than trying to do this with a box. Let's go ahead and wrap this project up uh, so that we can get on with our lives and I can get back to uh, working on the Christmas rush. So really quick here in EasyCAD, uh, I'm just going to save this file. I don't want to lose it. Um, just the standard no.ezd is fine and um, we'll minimize this. We're going to come back to that. In Illustrator, let's find our outline. Here it is. Uh, we need to get some text along this blade. Uh, the best way to do that is going to be with the ellipse tool. Uh, so we're just going to draw an ellipse and we want to get it just so that we're only really concerned with this bottom curve here. We want this bottom part of the curve to mostly mirror our, uh, our blade line, right? And uh, we want our text more or less in the middle. So, you know, accounting for the character height, the height of the characters here, um, you know, this is looking like a very good line. I'm, I'm very happy with that. 
We're gonna right click on our text tool and type on a path. If you haven't already seen um, artwork for uh, engravers, it's a great episode on the channel here. Uh, and I'll go ahead and throw uh, this way, I'll throw a link up there for you. So go watch that if you wanna get more in depth on this. But we're just gonna click type on a path and we just need to type our text really quick. Um, I went ahead and copied that out of the email really quick. So we'll go ahead and paste that in here. Uh, control A to select all of this fake text and control V to paste. Uh, so there it is. And um, all we need to do now, we're gonna double click this text again. We, we want this selected. We're gonna hit center. And when we hit center, it's gonna give us a really handy little grab bar right here uh, that we can use to bring this down. If I pull the line on the outside of the circle, the text is going to be on the outside of the circle, and it can get a little weird here, uh, but there it is. So outside of the circle, text is going to be on the outside. Inside of the circle, text is going to be on the inside. Uh, since we want this on the blade here, we're just going to go ahead and leave that on the inside. And from here, we can change our font type and text size. Uh, I think black chancery is going to work great for this one. It's one of my all-time favorite fonts. It is available for free uh, on Defont, I believe, .com. And uh, we're also going to just change our text size here. Let's turn the text size up, get it nice and big. Uh, that's filling a lot of the blade now. Maybe just a touch smaller. Uh, this isn't so subtle. Something like that. That looks really good. And uh, we just want to pay attention here. We, we have these little kind of dips in this font, dipping below our text line. So let's go ahead and move this up just a little bit more. Uh, and that is looking really, really sharp. Um, one last time we can come in here and maybe just change the angle of our blade just a little bit to match our text a little bit better. We're going to select our text and expand it, object expand. Uh, EasyCAD won't like that if that's not expanded. And we're also going to unite because we have some overlapping letters in here and EasyCAD does not like overlapping letters either. So we'll go ahead and unite that there. And from here, uh, we're, we're basically done guys. We can file, save as, we'll give this a new uh, title, maybe Zarya Final, and this is going to include our custom outline and our text. Illustrator version 8, that looks great. And we'll close this. We'll pop back into EasyCAD. Uh, we're resaving our, our outline here, so we don't need this one anymore. So we can go ahead and delete that, and uh, we're going to import a new vector file. We'll find our Zarya Final. There it is. Center it up. Ungroup. We're going to cut our outline away and we want to group and hatch our text here. Uh, standard stuff here, guys, uh, normal steel engraving stuff here. So cross hatch, 45 degrees, 0 0.02 line distance. Uh, that looks really good. And then we're going to paste our outline back in, cut our text, and we'll go ahead and light this up. Um, we did shrink this on the sides just a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to kind of guess redo that there. Uh, and then we'll just recenter it and uh, let's let's get this lit up. Let's get this lit up and see how it's falling on our axe here. Uh, and that's that looks beautiful. That that's really really a, a good strong line up there. Um, we might have overshortened it by just a little bit. So let's come back in and just give a little bit of that length back. Um, a little bit of that length back. If you're really having trouble lining things up, go back into Illustrator or Lightburn and use your nodes to adjust accordingly. It, it definitely takes some practice to get it right every time, especially on curved objects, but you guys can do it. You just got to put the time in, practice a little bit. Uh, in this case, we're kind of cheating by skewing. You shouldn't really be doing this, but you know, uh, like I said, we're in a rush today. So we'll go ahead and relight that up. I gave it a little bit of length back and uh, they're on EasyCAD looking very nice now. Very, very nice. I'm gonna go make just a quick adjustment by hand. That was a quick cut, guys, but I just uh, I just went in there by hand and just looked at it with my eyes and, and got things just right uh, by moving the ax around a little bit. And last but not least, we're gonna come in, we're gonna paste our text back in. We're going to delete uh, this outline here. We'll light the text one more time just to make sure that we like the way it looks. And that is beautiful. Uh, that looks really, really great right there, just like that. So uh, last but not least, guys, let's go ahead and get this marked. I just want to, I didn't want to leave you hanging. I want to get all the way through this. So uh, we'll do the aluminum general setting is, is good for just kind of like a quick steel mark uh, as well. And uh, let's go ahead and get the most pulse power out of this as possible. We'll go and bump our frequency up to 37. Should be nice 
uh, nice hard engraving on that. And uh, without dragging this on forever, we're, we're basically good to go. We'll set this to something like five passes and uh, let's go ahead and run it. And that's looking really good. We just want to go ahead and add our steel anneal over the top of that uh, just to keep it nice and safe from corrosion. So let's come down here in the parameter library, steel anneal general, and uh, one more pass. Here we go. As usual guys, uh, we're just gonna clean this up with a little uh, three-in-one oil. So we'll go ahead just with the grain here and just kind of get all of that uh, burn and, and brown yuck uh, off of our steel. We certainly don't want that. We want it nice and shiny for the customer. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of blend that on the steel there and kind of work it in and that looks great. Uh, so let's take a look at the final product here. Uh, quick zoom here we go and uh, there it is all right guys so that's looking really 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 nice with our custom outline that we made in illustrator uh, or lightburn it works both ways uh, but there it is that is the final result how nice is that uh, I'm, I'm really really happy with with how that came out Quick note, you probably mentioned my gigantic goggles. Uh, these are the YG5s from Laser Shields, uh, and they are super duper cool. Uh, they have 55% visible light transmission, which is like excellent. I can see like it's daylight, uh, which is really, really cool. There's like very little darkness going on, um, and they block like all sides of my face. They really seal my eyes in, and they fit right over my glasses, which is perfect. Um, I'm going to have a full review of these and a bunch of other laser goggles from the Laser Shields uh, No IR company. Um, it's noirlaser.com if you just want to skip ahead and check them out now. But full reviews coming. They're super comfortable and uh, I, I really am, am super stoked on these. So uh, goodbye old Chinese goggles. It was time to upgrade from free mascot because we got the UV. So we have to start taking laser eye safety a little more seriously around here. Uh, and these things are perfect. So just a quick note about that but um yeah i hope you guys found this tutorial useful i know i haven't published a ton of videos we usually do just like an avalanche of content all the time 24 7 and uh it's just been so crazy busy here with christmas but um this has been a highly requested tutorial so i did just want to take a second and get something out for you guys to get you through the holidays um if you have any questions about this of course you can leave me a comment uh, below or check out our free discord server. It's got just under just we're right there just under 2,000 members uh, We're happy to help you out there for free There's a ton of people on there that love to share stories and tips and tricks and settings and uh, help each other out And it's really just a, a really awesome laser community to be a part of I'm so proud of all of our members over there for making it a fun and welcoming place to be uh, if you want to step your game up and support the channel uh, and and, and kind of help out, uh, help run things, go check out the Laser Master Academy. Uh, it's an awesome place. We've got a bunch of bonus live streams for you, bonus episodes of the podcast. Uh, we've got our uh, full parameter libraries for the CO2 gantry and the fiber laser. We're going to be adding the CO2 galvo and the UV very early next year uh, and a bunch of other perks. It's a great place to be and uh, most importantly, it helps support the channel and makes videos like this one possible. So uh, if you want to check that out too, it's master masters.lasereverything.net go take a look at it uh, and sign up if you want to support the show thank you guys so much for uh, watching this episode and hanging out with me today. If you got value out of this video, you learned how to do outlines uh, for, for EasyCAD or Lightburn, go ahead and smash the like button. Let everybody else know that the content is amazing. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time I post a video. We got a lot more coming at you in 2022. And uh, happy holidays to all of you guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me for a little while. And I will see you in the next one.